Thanks, Terry. That was amazing. Uh, welcome to worship this morning, whether you are here in the house or in Toledo, Washington, or at Violet Springs in rehab, or on the road, or in your home. We're, get, we're grateful that we can gather together in lots of different ways here, virtually, around the country, literally, as we worship our God. For our guests, first of all, we're happy that you're here, uh, and our evangelism team encourages you to fill out the yellow guest cards that are located in the pew pockets. You can place that in the offering plate as you leave, or if you wish, you can take them to the welcome desk so that we can know that you're here and have an opportunity to follow up with you. Our intern, Jamie, will be sharing pictures from her recent trip to the Holy Land this Tuesday, uh, June 28th at 6.30 p.m. Great chance for us to hear from Jamie, to see some wonderful images from the Middle East, uh, and to share some fellowship time together. From Allie Adams and her VBS team, thank you, Epiphany. So last week, you hosted almost 50 preschoolers with the help of 40-plus volunteers for Rocking Week at Monumental VBS. Kids spent the week celebrating God's greatness, learning about God's vast love for them, and cheering and singing and making all kinds of good noise, great singing. The spirit here was amazing, and uh, we're grateful for that program. Uh, Epiphany is marching in the July 4th Pickerington uh, Parade. If you'd like to participate, plan to line up along Opportunity Way between 8.30 and 9.30 a.m. Uh, parade spots will be numbered. Our number will be emailed to me later this week, and we'll share it in a special edition of Connect. The parade begins at 10 a.m. We'll have goodie bags to hand out to people along the parade route, so come out and uh, represent Epiphany. Also, our annual July 4th Backyard Party featuring jazz music with our own David Detweiler, ice cream, and fireworks the evening of July 4th as well. A reminder that you can support our mission uh, through your offerings, either here in the offering plates as you leave or online. You can go to our website and find some ways to support our mission there. One of Epiphany's long-standing mission partners is First English Lutheran Church, located at 1015 East Main Street, Columbus, Ohio. First English was among the first ELCA congregations to celebrate its identity as a Reconciling in Christ, or RIC, congregation. Like our congregation, First English has a welcome statement that reflects its, com its commitment to welcoming and affirming a wide range of people. This is how it reads. Who is welcome at First English Lutheran Church? If you are Asian, Latinx, black, or white. If you are male, female, transgendered, or non-binary. If you are three years old or 103. If you are straight, gay, lesbian, or bisexual. If you are Republican, Democrat, or Independent, if you struggle with addictions, if you have a criminal record, if you own a home, rent, or are houseless, if you are disabled or a person with differing abilities, if you are committed to being racially erratically loving and welcoming into a community of faith centered in the good news of Jesus Christ, at First English we are committed to carrying out the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who come to our door. Here in this place, you will find a warm, loving Christian family which strives to faithfully proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all of God's children. Therefore, in faithfulness to the gospel and to the best of our ability, we promise to provide ministries and pastoral care to all who seek God in this place. If you look at the Facebook page of First English, you will see this, an image that is a symbol marking Juneteenth. On June 19, 1865, some 2,000 Union troops arrived in Galveston Bay, Texas. The Army announced that more than 250,000 
enslaved black people in the state were free by executive decree. This day came to be known as Juneteenth by the newly freed people in Texas. Juneteenth was declared a federal holiday in June of 2021. It is also celebrated as a holiday by 18 states, including Ohio. When we look at the Reconciling in Christ logo, we see the colors black and brown on the right side. Black and brown symbolize our commitment to welcome and affirm black, indigenous, and people of color. Many people use the acronym BIPOC to identify this diverse group of people. On this last Sunday of our celebration of pride, we lift up our welcome statement and its expression of love, acceptance, and affirmation of people that are often rejected and sidelined by the church. As it says, we are about embracing people from every race and ethnicity, affirming and loving people of all sexual orientations, cherishing people of all gender expressions and gender identities. As I like to say, as the people of Epiphany, we are about progress, not perfection. And so we celebrate the progress we have made, and we ask God to give us wisdom and courage as we continue to explore our identity as followers of Jesus. We please stand as we join together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we gather for worship, we hear the words spoken to your servant Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. As we celebrate the big and bold work of your spirit in our lives and in the world, Give us faith that is strong and courageous. Give us faith that emboldens us to move through our fears to be part of the big things you are doing in the world through us. We pray this in the name of Jesus, whose great love inspires us to do big things that truly matter. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I'm not sure are there any kids in the congregation with us this morning. That's all right. There are probably kids at home watching either now or maybe later. So we want to just share this brief message with them. As Pastor Brad mentioned this week, we had our vacation Bible school here at church. And it had me thinking about relationships and about friendships that we form and especially as kids, friendships are so important. It can totally change how you look at things when you're going to school. If you have friends there, that can make going to school much happier, a much better experience for you. The same thing goes for church. If you make friends at church, that makes you want to be there on Sunday mornings, on Wednesday nights. Throughout the week, it makes you want to go. Friendships are so important. 
So with VBS, we got to spend time with our friends and meeting a lot of new friends this past week, and it was a lot of fun. So for kids who were at home watching this at one point or another, I want you to think about your friends and making new friends because following Jesus is all about relationships. The relationships we can form with new people, our old relationships. So be thinking about how we can spread God's love to everyone we meet, to think about all the new friends we can make just like Jesus would want us to do, just like Jesus did during his ministry. So be thinking about that this week. How can we be like Jesus and be a friend to everyone? The scripture reading is from the 15th chapter of Acts. Then certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversions of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and said, it is necessary for them to be circumcised in order to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, My brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles would hear the message of the good news and become believers. And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return. I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen. From its ruins I will rebuild it, and I will set it up, so that all other peoples may seek the Lord even the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord, who has been making these things known from long ago. Therefore I have reached the decision that we should not trouble those Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled and from blood. The word of the Lord. Well, good morning again, friends. As always, I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to worship alongside you and to spend some time dwelling in God's word together. If this is your first time joining us here at Epiphany, my name is Jamie Ulrich and I serve as Epiphany's pastoral intern. And we are so glad to have you with us this morning. So this month, in recognition of Pentecost, we've been celebrating the work of God's Spirit in our lives. It's a big deal, which is why our sermon series for June is called This Is Big. All month long, we've been talking about the church being a big deal, how the church is big and bold, and how we have a big mission as followers of Jesus. 
And this week, the focus we're thinking about is big shift. In today's reading from the book of Acts, we hear how the disciples made an important decision about some of the very first communities of believers, a decision that would ultimately impact the church for centuries to come. In other words, a decision that was a really big shift. I think all of us have experienced shifts in our life at one point or another. I imagine that we all know what it's like to have things shift in our life, whether it's something relatively small or a rather big shift. These shifts could be like getting married or having a baby or even having a second or a third baby. Maybe you've experienced the shift of starting a new job or moving away from home. Maybe you've found a church that you really love or you finally adopted the golden retriever puppy you've always wanted. But shifts aren't always positive things, are they? For you, maybe the biggest shift in your life was getting divorced or experiencing the loss of a loved one. Maybe it was losing a job or having a big argument with one of your closest friends. The shifts and changes we experience in life can be difficult to go through. Big shifts in life aren't always easy. The very first followers of Jesus knew that big shifts are often complicated and can require a lot of conversation. In Acts chapter 15, the disciples have a dispute about who is in and what people have to do to claim to be followers of Jesus. As they began to form their communities, they ran into several questions and hiccups along the way. They started asking themselves things like, would Gentiles need to be circumcised like the Jewish followers of Jesus? Would they have to follow over 600 laws included in the Hebrew scriptures and then become followers of Jesus? The disciples weren't sure how to proceed and what rules to follow because frankly, they were in uncharted territory. Finally, after a lot of conversation and debate, we hear in our reading that the disciple James stood up and said, it is my judgment that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. He says that they should not trouble the Gentile believers with all their rules and requirements. Instead, James recognizes that this community of believers should make it as easy as possible for more people to join the community and to hear the good news of Jesus. And let me tell you, friends, this was a big shift. It is once and for all a shift to grace. This shift made it so that all people, no matter where they came from or how they used to follow God, could become part of the Jesus movement. And this shift shows us today that there is nothing you have done that can place you outside the circle of those that claim Jesus as Lord and follow him. And in fact, there is no circle at all. That is incredibly good news. As Lutherans, we believe in Martin Luther's idea of sola gratia, which means grace alone in Latin. I actually have a tattoo of this saying on my wrist because I think it's so important and it captures God's love for us so well. As Lutherans, we believe that we don't have to do anything to earn God's grace, forgiveness, and love. Instead, God freely gives it to us as a gift on account of our faith in Jesus. Grace alone is what saves us. And the disciples' conversation about circumcision that we find in Acts conveys one of the first examples of Christians believing in God's grace. They understood that God's love for humankind is so big that it doesn't matter what your background is or what your upbringing was like. God welcomes us into the community 
no matter what, because of that grace and love. Now, I imagine that you are grateful that God offers you grace and love as a gift with no cost whatsoever. I know I am. But what about the people that haven't been part of a Lutheran church and heard these messages of grace? What about the people who aren't sure what they believe about Jesus? What about people you know that have done terrible things that you think should disqualify them from receiving God's grace? What about the people that don't conform to our lifestyles, our customs, our ways of seeing the world? The list goes on and on. But beloved, the truth is, God wants us to do whatever we can to make it easy for people to follow Jesus. God wants us to not make it difficult for the people around us, especially the people with different experiences, different backgrounds, and different perspectives, to be part of a community of Jesus followers. God wants us to offer grace and compassion rather than judgment. God wants us to love like Jesus did and to form revolutionary relationships with each and every person we can. This shift is away from rules, regulations, and laws and towards relationships. This shift is away from how we have always done it before. It moves us towards asking people what their joys, concerns, hopes and dreams are and responding to them rather than just assuming that we know what people need. When we do this, we can be more effective at sharing Jesus as the one who speaks to us and the things that matter in our lives. This shift is away from an insider church focus to a focus where instead we ask ourselves, what do people who do not know Jesus or have not found a loving and accepting community need from us? What kind of community do they need? How can we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to them? This shift away from rules and regulations towards grace and love for all people is an ongoing challenge for us as followers of Jesus. And friends, there are always plenty of new possibilities for us to try and make our church a place where sharing God's grace and love is our highest priority. Last weekend, a couple members of the Epiphany community had the opportunity to march in the Columbus Pride Parade. We were part of a larger Evangelical Lutheran Church in America group. There were about 100 of us Lutherans marching in the parade. And each of us wore a bright blue t-shirt with the ELCA logo on the front, and on the back it had the words, there is a place for you here. There was something really special about the overall atmosphere of the crowd at Pride people waving flags, displaying their pride on t-shirts, holding balloons, singing and dancing to the music. There was so much excitement and enthusiasm in the air. It was absolutely contagious. But what stuck out to me the most about us Lutherans marching in the parade was how we were showing up and supporting a group that has historically been harmed within the church that by simply being there and marching in the parade, we were showing members of the LGBTQIA community that we are a church that cares about creating relationships and spreading God's love above all else. By showing up and participating in the Pride Parade, we were able to show everyone there that the people of Epiphany Lutheran Church and the wider ELCA care about the LGBTQIA community, that we want them to know and experience God's love and grace like we have, that there is a place 
for everyone in our church. Friends, following Jesus means that we have been called to share God's big love with everyone. The church is a movement of people around the world inspired by the Holy Spirit who are committed to telling the story of Jesus of Nazareth, who shared God's dream for the world and its people. Even though some who call themselves followers of Jesus are more enamored with the trappings of religion than they are with following the one who spent most of his time criticizing religion, we can help people see the way of love that removes requirements. We can help people see that God is so loving and that God will always prioritize relationships over rules. We can help people see how God is still changing lives and how God's love refuses to let us keep anyone on the outside or on the margins. In the church, there have always been people that have understood Jesus' invitation to love in ways that most haven't. Throughout the history of Christianity, people like the Apostle Paul, Martin Luther, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Dorothy Day, Martin Luther King Jr., Rachel Held Evans, Rob Bell, and many others have challenged people to see that with Jesus, all are welcome and all means all. That with Jesus, there is a wideness in God's mercy and everyone is welcome to have a seat at the table. These disciples have shown us that the revolutionary relationships God forms with us through Jesus wipe away the rules and regulations that would keep us from the one who saves us and gives us abundant life. They have shown us what it looks like to spread God's love and grace to everyone without exception. Now, beloved, here's the best part. Jesus calls you and me and everyone we know to be a part of this movement too. There's always room for more people at the table. You are invited to be part of this big mission, this big movement, this world-changing, life-changing way of living and loving and serving. Each and every one of us has the unique opportunity to participate in God's mission and to share the love of God with the world. And what a joy it is to do so. And as always, you are encouraged to invite others along for the ride too. Everyone always says that their favorite thing about going to church is the community, right? That there's something extra special about the people you meet at church, that it's the people here that keep you coming back week after week, that's amazing. And it's exactly the kind of momentum a movement like this needs. It's all about relationships. When you talk to your friends about church, tell them why you think it's so special. Tell them why you love coming here. And then tell them we'd love for them to join us sometime because there's always a place for them here. Friends, we are invited to get rid of the rules and requirements and to just love others. There is no maximum capacity or limit to God's love. There's always room at the table for more. There is a place for you in this community and this kingdom. We are called to invite others to join us as we follow Jesus and spread God's big love for us. We are invited to live big and to love big in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let us profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and of all creation. God of faithfulness, set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, guide all who govern, that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. We pray for our elected leaders to work together to make strides against gun violence, especially in our schools. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict, especially the people of Ukraine and our friends in Haiti. Lord, in your mercy. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying, especially Jessica Palmer, Lisa Boyer, Al Gee, the Preston family, Andrea Hannum, Michelle Healy, Emily, Brett, and Libby, and others we name aloud are in the silence of our hearts. Support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving com companions as they work toward help, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of joy in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help, and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. We share a sign of God's peace with one another.
sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now safe am i love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to him I give ever to him I cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best songs faithful loving service to to him belong love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me in danger look above Jesus completely saves he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves he's the master of the sea billows his will obey he your savior wants to be be saved today love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me oh love lifted me me the 
Thank you, John. Good to know that when we're down, love lifts us up. Love Jesus. Thank you. Please stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Mighty and gracious God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We'd like to invite forward those who are serving the communion meal this morning.
Would you please stand? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of the bread and wine that we have shared strengthen us and unite us in bonds of love and peace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. At Epiphany, our mission statement is revealing God through revolutionary relationships. So this week, I invite you to think about how you can share God's big love in revolutionary ways to your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends, people you see on the street and walking around in public, wherever you can. Share God's love in revolutionary ways. Go in peace, serve the Lord.